All your teams won over the weekend, Mojo. You had your Bruins, you had Jacksonville, and you had Oakland. You had a great weekend. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, the high school team I coach on Fridays, De La Salle, they won as well. So it, it was a great weekend uh, you, for the household. De La Salle still a national power? You know what? We were, we were ranked number one at the beginning of the year, went to Texas and, and took a tough loss to a, a really good Texas team. And uh, we're I think we're ranked like five now. But uh, these the kids, you know, it's different from when I played. And, and so it's like adjusting, trying to adjust to the different culture and the different way kids are now. But um, – it's fun, though, because you're seeing them improve week after week, and it's, it just keeps me in the game, keeps me close to the game, the game that I love, you know, so it's nice. Okay, explain to me the new kid. What's it like coaching <laughs> these kids now in high school? Well, first of all, social media has definitely uh, changed the game in recruiting and the way kids, you know, perceive certain things. Um you know, I get – because I'm in L.A. five days a week. I get the practice tape and I get the uh, game tapes of the other teams on my phone. So they get a chance to watch it there. And then I get a chance to communicate with them through through text. So it's just a lot of – it's just real different. And, and to be honest with you um, – they, a lot of kids, and I'm not saying ours, but a lot of kids expect things and don't work for them. So uh, just you know, being around kids in general, it, it, it's different than what it used to be because of social media. All right, let me talk about the uh, football yesterday. If I said you could be the, um, the Cowboys now, you could be Jason Garrett or you could be Pete Carroll. Seahawks are 0-2, Cowboys are 2-0. and Who's in better shape moving forward here? Uh, it has to be the Seahawks. Just, I mean, they had a tough. Their first two games were really tough. Obviously, going to St. Louis, they always have trouble in St. Louis, and then Green, going to Green Bay, um, playing against Aaron Rodgers and coming, that's always tough as well. Um, and then they, I feel like they have Detroit and Minnesota next, which will be two really good games. But they're at home. We know Seattle plays well in Seattle, so that that'll be a nice way to kind of bounce back. Um, I think once they get Cam back in the building, everything will start to go where where it needs to be. Um, Dallas, on the other hand, they're finding a way to win, which I think is really exciting. But now you're playing with Brandon Whedon, and you know every a lot of people have tape on him. They know what he can do. Tony Romo's out eight weeks. Des Bryant's out. Uh, four to six or ten to twelve, whatever it is, and um, their running game is struggling. They, they haven't been able to run the ball. They haven't found a consistent runner yet. So uh, there's a lot of trouble in Dallas on the offensive side. I think defensively they've been banged up a little bit as well, uh, but they've been finding a way to win. So we'll see how it goes. But I'd rather be the Seahawks. Was it a dirty play on Romo? No, no. You got to finish the quarterback. Anytime you can hit him, you got to finish him. Yeah, that's just part of the game. I mean, that's just like the same play with Terrell Suggs and, and Sam Bradford. Anytime a quarterback goes to that read option player, anytime you can get a hit on a quarterback, that's what you want to do because at the end of the day, those hits, uh, they, they add up. And then all of a sudden, now the quarterback's seeing ghosts or he doesn't want to get hit, he's a little sore. And, and it helps you as a defense, uh, him throwing erratic passes. Worst team in football right now is who? Oh, worst team in football right now. Oh, you know, I was going to say the Redskins, but they won. Um, I don't think they're that bad. The Saints. I think it's the Saints, to be honest Over with the you. Bears? The Saints and the Bears, yeah. How did the Saints get here? Well, you know what? The way the, way the system is, is designed is for teams to get to prom at a real high level of play. And then, obviously, when you start playing well, similar to what's happening in Seattle, coaches tend to leave, yeah. players tend to leave, and you have to rebuild through the draft. And if you don't draft well, you know – then there's your problem. And so I think the Saints, uh, you trade away Jimmy Graham. You're trying to get back to running the ball. Um, you get banged up on defense. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're things just aren't going well. So um, your quarterback's getting older. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on. So they have to find their identity. They have to find an identity on the offensive side. And on defense, they just have to get healthy. And I think they'll change. But right now, uh, them and the Bears are – they're, they're pretty bad. He's Maurice Jones, Drew of the NFL Network, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Would you have close to 2,000 carries in your career? A little over 2,000, I think. Your physical condition after 2,000 carries? Uh, I'm pretty good. You know, I, I mean, I gained, I gained a little weight 
because uh, I, I I just turned off everything. Like I just I had to turn the engine off and, and put the battery set them to neutral and get back to balance. I say so. Now I'm starting to work back out, but um, overall, I mean, I had three major surgeries. Um, they're doing okay. Um, and you know, I think like mentally, health wise, I'm 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 good. I only had two two concussions, so and that wasn't throughout my whole career. So I wasn't. That's not bad at all. Did you let your kids play? Oh, uh, my youngest one's playing now. He's seven. It's awesome. No worries. No no concerns. Mom doesn't have any problems. No, mom grew up around football with me. So, you, you know, I, I tell people all the time, the, the, the reason guys get really hurt in these young, like, Pop Warners in high school is because they don't have the experience. When you're playing seven-year-old football, no one's running fast enough to hurt each other. I mean, they literally run into each other and they both fall down. It's amazing. <laughs> and so the more comfortable, the more repetitions you get playing this game, getting comfortable to be – getting comfortable in those uncomfortable situations like jumping in the air and a guy coming to hit you or uh, when you're in the box and, like, you and a guy are square up. The more comfortable you are with that contact, the better you'll be. And so, it, it, to me, I try to refer to, would you have a first-year doctor do a heart surgery on you or would you rather have a 15-, 20-year veteran doctor doing a heart surgery on you? I mean, let's be honest. You don't want a kid straight out of med school opening up your chest Right, because the chances of him messing up are, are very high. But and so the same thing with football. If you have a guy who's his first year, he might get caught in a situation where he's he's never been in. He doesn't know how to react to it. And now you're playing with guys where there's no weight limit, there's no control, um, and, and a guy gets gets uh, severely hurt. But you, over two thousand carries. What's the one that stands out for good or bad? You know, always the fumbles always stand out. Because you feel like if you didn't fumble, you you'd have a chance. Or or sometimes when uh, like I step out of bounds on accident, those those definitely are the ones that get you. Because you had I think I had the most ninety eight yard games ever, right? <laughs> and so it's just like you're two steps away from a hundred, and for some reason I, I I messed up and didn't get. I got ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. Can so we like, check? Ridiculous. McLovin, would you check with Stats Inc. the most ninety eight or ninety nine yard games? So guys, clo- you know, coming close to a hundred yard gains on it. Okay. Uh, so and you that the year you had sixteen hundred yards with that Jacksonville team, it's still one of the incredible performances in recent memory, Mo. Oh, I appreciate it. No, you know what? We had a we had a great. A great group. I mean, the things just didn't bounce our way, to be honest with you. Uh, David got hurt, and they ended up cutting David, and Blaine, they threw Blaine in the fire, and he wasn't really ready at the time. How did but, they miss um, on Blaine Gabbert? I, I don't think they missed on him, to be honest with you. I mean, you see him in, you see him in San Francisco. He's doing better. It's his second year in the same system. He looks better in preseason. He's more confident. we got to remember, every year of Blaine's uh, career at, at Jacksonville, it was a different offense, a different off- offensive coordinator, different offensive line. I mean, everything just changed rapidly around him. And then, to be honest with you, Blaine only played four years of football before he got to the pros. So you, you take him as a project to, to work him in, to get him right. I mean, I think two or three years down the road with the same system, Blaine would have been a really good quarterback. Um, but you know how this day and age is. No one has patience anymore. Everyone wants to win now instead of building up and being a contender for a long time. And so this guy got thrown in the fire early, and he just wasn't ready. Paulie, what do you have? Maurice Jones-Drew had six career games of 95 yards or more, but less than 100 yards. That's the worst, right? No. That's the, I'm telling you, there's not many more like that. Okay. 95, you got to look them up. Who, who's, who's, who's more than me? Okay, can we? It might take a little while for us. I mean, we we don't have oh. a, a deep research department here, Mojo. Oh, I I just thought McLovin was on his job. No, oh. if you know the show, you know McLovin's not on his job. Oh man, yeah, you gotta you exactly. gotta surround yourself with better people. Then <laughs> this is it's unbelievable. Yes, McLovin. Okay, just real quick story. One time I went up to MJD in the locker room and he called me Fritzy. So <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the times he had a concussion. Yeah, was, so I'm going to be slow on this research. Oh, no. <laughs> now, Paulie was going to make a joke that you just came up short, and I thought that was mean-spirited. Oh. When- uh, you know what? You, you know the funny thing about that is <laughs> those jokes keep coming. So, How tall no, are my, you? Honest. On, you know, how tall? Honestly, honestly, honestly. I'm 5'7 I'm and 3 fourths. So just under 5'8". Man. You but, but you had leverage, dude. 
football's a game of leverage. I know. That's what it's all about. You, leverage and quick wits. You got to be smart <laughs> on the field. You got to be able to like get in and get out quick. Because if you don't, man, those guys will jump on you. So I, I got in. I got a solid nine years in, and then it was time to come out. Now I can. I can be like you. I can say whatever I want, and no, no consequences. <laughs> I know no you're yelling at me. I know you got to go. Great to catch up with you again. I appreciate you, Dan. Anytime. We'll, let's do it again. Thank you, bro. That's uh, Maurice Jones-Drew, the NFL Network. He's always been one of our favorites.